I'm really impressed by Myron Duke's passionate commitment to uncovering the truth and the facts surrounding the JFK assassination. Myron Duke seems to be really dedicated passionately and sincerely to uncovering additional facts about the Kennedy assassination. And these new interviews could really shed new light on some of the key facts surrounding the assassination. As we approach this 60th anniversary, we know that the Warren Commission may have missed certain facts, the investigation may have been incomplete, and Myron Dukes may add to the historical perspective that we all deserve to know. I'm really impressed by Myron Dukes' passionate commitment to uncovering the truth and the facts surrounding the JFK assassination. Myron Duke seems to be really dedicated passionately and sincerely to uncovering additional facts about the Kennedy assassination. And these new interviews could really shed new light on some of the key facts surrounding the assassination. As we approach this 60th anniversary, we know that the Warren Commission may have missed certain facts, the investigation may have been incomplete, and Myron Dukes may add to the history. Ibi, Ibi. Hey, yo, Gadi. Yo, what up, what up, Sha? Yo, I've been telling you, one of your best defense mechanisms is all that energy they sending at you, tell them, yo, get at my big bro. Why y'all not getting at him? Who is Great. your big bro? I'm low. I know, tell him to get at me. Facts, right, right, right. They all arrived right. from me publicly. Now, what's going on with you since you wanted to pop up? You know, like with the conversation, I wasn't ready for you, but since we're here, what's going on with you and Hassan Campbell? Because we had a little debate about that. You know, I was a little bit mad you added me to a situation and I didn't like that. So, what's going on with you? And um, I thought y'all was cool on um, China. Well, me and Hassan, we good. And okay. all that ad and stuff, I don't know about all that, but, you know, I'm not trying to add you in nothing. If I got an issue with somebody, I deal with them directly. So, you know, I don't want to get into all of that, you know, the super cheerleading and all that. I don't want to do that. I, I'm just saying, whatever they did, the bullets, tell them, try that with me, girl. They won't even talk yeah, about but doing Bullets that gotta understand. We gotta keep it real out this bitch. Bullets gotta understand if he bringing that energy on the internet, he gotta bring that energy in real life. You get what I'm saying? Well, look, and we just gotta, gotta understand. Nah, Sometimes people just they got personalities. You don't have to try to crucify and assassinate a man because you know he expressing his, his, his viewpoints. Now I don't agree with everything Bullets said. You know, and sometimes you're right. If people gotta, you know, they gotta get reprimanded. But it don't always have to be humiliation. Right, but in the streets, right? In the streets, right, you got to back up what you talk. And see, that's why Clubhouse is out of control. You get what I'm saying? Because, of, you know, like, Bullets was getting it on Clubhouse. You get what I'm saying? But that shit, whatever come out your mouth, it don't matter. Whatever fucking come out your mouth is what come out your mouth. You got to own that shit. You got to fight for that shit. You get what I'm saying? Hey, yo, whack be on the Clubhouse calling everybody a bitch-ass nigga every day. And he got a little bag, so yeah, he, 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 he got that really authority. Yeah, but I don't really care about Wack. Nah, nah, y'all discriminate. Y'all, y'all, y'all not hug this person, right? And then try to crucify this person. Fuck I, I don't be on Clubhouse. I don't be on Clubhouse. I don't fuck with Wack because I don't well, fuck yeah, with listen, a nigga buddy, that got hit four or five times. I don't, I don't want to A nigga that he got hit four or five times right, on the right, internet. Sir. I don't want to take that, right? Just remember what I told you. Anybody yeah. that's coming at you, like, I, you know, not everybody, because... You got your own little issue. The, the, the people that we know, right? If they come at you, just tell them, yo, come see him. Go see him. He waiting. All right? Sure. An amateur Bridgeport historian released a new book today about the JFK assassination. All eyewitness accounts that have never been heard by the Warren Commission. Myron Dukes telling us the self-published volume is called JFK Assassination Eyewitnesses Speak Together 1963 Second Edition. He says Kennedy's death led to a string of assassinations and emboldened people with racist ideologies. After President Kennedy was assassinated, they became even bolder. They, they assassinated 
Malcolm X, then Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King, and then Robert F. Kennedy. So it was like a five year span where like evil was just prevalent and it was allowed to just, you know, quiet men because of their voices. The book is available on Amazon and some other major platforms. Yeah, smash the like button. You know, that'll be appreciative. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. She is live. You know what I'm saying? We live. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? What's up, bro? What's good, God? In. What's good with you? How you? I'm well. How you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, family. Okay. Yeah. Well, we yeah. waiting on back. You know, I'm <coughs> trying to learn the system. Oh, okay, 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 okay. But uh, he just needed where he press something and then he could go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell him, just tell him. I put it in his, uh, his DM, if anything. Yeah, said, but um, what I typed is that 050 movement. They been chatting about me. Ten toes been chatting about me. Investigators quickly discovered that this was not just an ordinary hit and run crash here in Queens, rather a homicide investigation after they found a victim's body dead in the back seat. The deadly drive involving a Range Rover and utility van had nothing to do with the vehicles colliding at a red light. Rather, what was inside one of them? I thought it was a regular auto accident, and unfortunately, I saw a gentleman or the suspect running around the white van and he was carrying a large bag. Detectives did too, until they found a 48-year-old Bridgeport, Connecticut man found shot to death in the back seat of that SUV. Jimmy Bear was with his three-year-old son when they spotted the man driving the Range Rover make a run for it. Okay, he looked like he was carrying something in his hands. Uh, I couldn't tell right away. I thought it was like, you know, maybe he had a weapon on him. The murder mystery started to unravel yesterday at the intersection of Parsons Boulevard and Franklin Avenue in Queens. Investigators say the driver collided head on with the van sitting at a red light. To see something like this going on around here is uh, unheard of. So, you know, I was very surprised. Much to the surprise of police, too, who found a single shell casing inside the luxury SUV. They have not found the driver whose involvement in the apparent execution style killing is still unclear. Uh... Investigators have not yet publicly released the identity of the man who was found in the backseat or if they know where exactly the initial crime scene took place. At this point, there's no description of the suspect. They're looking for video for that. No arrests have been made. Support my man, China, man. Salute. Salute, China. How you, family? Salute. I just want everybody, you know, while we get this, before we get the live, you know, please, you know, support Big Bro with the cash app. You know what I'm saying? After this video is over and I put it on YouTube, please support the cash app and everything. Support what he's doing right now, the music and the movement. We out here, we, we promoting, you know, positive vibes and what he got to say because he got a story that he has to tell y'all about certain dudes in the industry and how to do business in the industry, you know what I'm saying? So it ain't just what people gotta understand, it ain't about the jail stories. It's about it's about the redemption. You know, so please support Big Bro Dollar Sign Boss Dawn 0104 at Cash App. Please support the movement. You know what I'm saying? And and we gonna we gonna really and, and support the support the clothing line too. Support everything, That's man. It's called Young Justice, man. Young I gotta Justice. get you one. I got to get you a Young Justice piece, man. You know, thank I, I got to have you, you moving you. around with that, man. Thank you. Thank they don't you. know, man, but you the future. I thank you. I thank you, big bro. Oh. Well, this, we let me say this, though. Mm -hmm. let, let me say this. Um, It's 514. Let's reconvene like 530, right? I'm going to have mm -hmm. everything prepared. How about that? that all fair? right. All right. So tell all everybody, right. get your people ready. Tell them 530, we, we going to Zoom. All right, let's do it. 5.30 then. 5.30, all right? All right. All right, okay. big bro. Wow. Salute. All right, so 5.30, we're going to be back. We're going to be back. I'm going to be back live. 5.30 with China. We're going we gonna to do everything. We're going to talk about a lot of things. Like I said, man, you know, it's about 
positive vibes, man. It's about the vibes, man. It's about putting, you know, positive energy out there, man. And I like to say salute the people that support the platform. So I'm going to be back live on Instagram Live at 530. Please share this live. Please support this live. Please. This is a dope interview. We're going to be exposing a lot. We're going to be talking about the industry. We're going to be talking about, you know, mass incarceration. We're going to be talking about a whole lot of things. Please support the movement. Young Justice Closing Line. Please support the homie China on the Cash App, dollar sign, boss down, 0104. You know, and like I said, man, we working. Peace to you, Amina. Um, it's what we do. I had an interview today. But we're going we to still rock it out, man. It, it, listen, the hustle never stops. It's business. So we're going to be back at 530 on live. Like I told you, 530, I will be back live on Instagram, and we're going to be back to work, all right? on a nigga live like that I was still getting sex back had to fuck around getting them packs back niggas tell you gentlemen it's your boy Bullets Gotti you know I really wasn't going to do a video I was contemplating but I said I wanted to do a video um I did a live stream talking about you know the past in the chain I really didn't get to get my Opinions off because I was real tired and it was early in the day and the news just had hit me. What people don't understand was the dude China had a story to tell. He was an unsung hero. Um, People look at him as, oh, he was a dude at that time, predicate slasher, he put work in. But they don't look at the positive things that dude did, where he basically was helping the youth, you know, giving advice to the youth, speaking to the youth, you know, trying to be a positive influence and role model and being someone that is there to speak to the youth so they don't go traveling through the same roads he did. The brother has always been about growth and development. That's one thing I, I respect about him. He's a real OG. He's about growth and development through and through. Um, what he spoke about was respect. You know, getting his just doing his flowers and having the people to hear his story so people don't make the same mistakes that he made. He lost his life for whatever reason. I don't know. You know, I'm still trying to find out what happened. But, you know, it was personal. And it could have been about, it could have been anything. You know what I'm saying? It was personal. They hear dudes dragging a the homie. They hear dudes celebrating and, you know, throwing shots at him. It, it didn't make no sense. You know, the man didn't mean no harm. He just didn't like to see people get disrespected and mistreated, you know, and he was about his respect. He was about, you know, standing on his own two feet. You know, when I met China, you know, last year and we had our conversation and the homie Devon brought us together, man, like we built on a whole different things not just about streets but we talked about politics and we talked about you know him you know being in the politics you know being heavy in politics and 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 
and having a political power like he had in, in Bridgeport, Connecticut and helping, you know, people get, you know, certain politicians get voted in, you know, and talking about things that he was doing with the youth and going to speak to the youth. You know, this man wasn't no guy that was about, you know, negativity and uncivilized BS. He was just about speaking the truth and speaking his mind. You know, man had a lot of love for me. You know what I'm saying? A lot of love for me. And I, I, I got the same love for him, too. You know, when the situation happened with me um, in May, when uh, the whole thing with the video he hit me up. He like, yo, bro, you all right, man? Like, I'll come up there, bro. Like, he, he was telling me, like, he'll come up there, man. I was like, nah, man, it's, it's all good, man. Ain't nothing really happened, man. It's good. You know, I'm, I'm good, you know. It's a good dude. You know what I'm saying? I was going out there to Bridgeport, Connecticut to visit him in his city because he came out here to Queens. And I was so busy. I was tied up. I really wanted to see him. You know what I'm saying? So we could have got some content. But it just was so messed up that, you know, my schedule was hectic. So when I was able to talk to them last Friday, um, it was good to talk to them, you know what I'm saying? I was, you know, I was I was kinda worried because I ain't speak to him in a minute and he had hit me. And so me and him chopped it up and he was telling me, yo, do the do the Batman joint and then, you know, I do mine the next day. And I really wanted to do his because I really not only wanted to talk about the prison stuff, but I wanted to talk about, you know, everything, you know, what he been his trials, tribulations and the new the new things that he had coming up, you know, like his book that he wrote about JFK, which people it's not speaking about his book that he wrote about the JFK murder, you know, the things that he exposed in the book. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about this man as an author. Everybody wants to talk about the street stories. Everybody wants to talk about, oh, this dude, he murdered this one and that one. But all this man wanted was his story to be out there, you know, for somebody that was arrested, you know, for a crime that he didn't commit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he, he, was, he was arrested. And he was able to get his, you know, get his freedom back. You know what I'm saying? Get his freedom back. And he fought, 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 fought. And all he was doing was pushing for, you know, prison reform and things like that. And, and, and dealing with the, the abuse that he was dealing with. Being incarcerated. Um, being in the box, you know. Um, dealing with, you know... Because what people don't understand, prison makes you into, you know, a different type of person. You you go in there as a, as what they would call a weak person, and then you come out there as a full blooded warrior, you know. Because now you 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 got to it's about survival. It's about kill or be killed. You're defending yourself, and you're going through so much in there. So you have to be tough. You have to be strong. You have to be fearless. And, and China was all of that. He was a fearless dude. You know, um, he stood alone. You got to respect a man that stood alone. He came and was incarcerated in New York City State Prison. You know, in the height of the times of the beginning of the Bloods and Latin King beef. And just the times where it was, it was real deadly on Rikers Island and upstate. So survive those times to come home with your freedom being in the box you know just being in there you know being locked in the box do you know what it is to be locked in solitary confinement you know losing your mind in there like this is this is the things that this man went through you know um it's sad you know what i'm saying because he has a newborn child, you know, um, he has an older daughter, he has two daughters, you know, and to, to be taken away from his family, the people that love him, and to hear dudes on YouTube continuously attack this man for no reason, no reason at all, just for speaking his truth, just for speaking his mind, just for calling people out on their hypocrisy, 
standing ten toes down, being a man, you know, how can you how can you hate a person for being who he was? You know what I'm saying? He was a good I I, I, I consider him as a friend, as a brother. I could fit I consider him as a as a good dude, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't know about other dudes racing, but he he's been fair and he he's been he's been real with me. You know what I'm saying? He's always been a good dude to me. And he got a lot of love for me. And I got a lot of love for that dude, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm kind of mad that we really didn't get to chop it up more about a lot of things, man. Because I really wanted to, you know, because, you know, I'm upset because I had a video um, that I did, but the, the interview didn't save. It was like the the first part of me was interviewing before me and Devon and him was in the car talking. But it's a it's a part where me and him talked about his incarceration. And he talked about, you know, being in a box and his political, you know, being very political out there in Bridgeport and dealing with the politics and dealing with different type of politicians and getting different politicians elected, you know, and standing up for what's right. And... I was so mad that it didn't save, and I only got the second half, but it's all good, though, you know what I'm saying, but I'm just kind of upset about that, because the man had a story to tell, he had a story that's a real unsung story, that if people heard his story, if the youth heard his story, man, they would understand, like, this man went through a lot, you know, he went through a lot, man, he really went through a lot, and... To be here, you know, with his, to be here and to be free, you know, to have his freedom, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing. And the things that he did was powerful, you know, to be a man that was incarcerated, to write a book about JFK, you know, to write a book that's on Amazon, you know, right now, if y'all want to go support support that man by you know purchase his book you know because it's a good book it's a good read I, i'm i'm i actually got it in my my kindle you know what I'm saying it's a good read and when he researched for that book when he talks about the jfk assassination you know this is a guy that you know they call him a uh you know the predicate slashing and, and, and you know what he did in jail but not to look at this man was a knowledgeable person. He was an intellect. He was a person that I look at as a revolutionary. I look at as a dude that that stood for something. You know, a lot of niggas say they stand for something, but they really don't. They fall for anything. He didn't fall for anything. He stood for what's right. You know, and like I said, he was a good dude, man. He, he was a good dude, man. It's just sad, man, the way he went out, man. You know, I don't, I don't wish this on nobody. Like I said, I, I lost my cousin the same way. You know what I'm saying? He also was incarcerated. He did 24 years, you know. And to be incarcerated, right, and to be imprisoned, to come home after all he is, surviving death, and to come home to be murdered. Is sad, man. You know, my eyes are a little watery right now, you know, because it hurts, man, because you know what I'm saying? Like, I look at the dude as really as a true friend, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really, I ain't gonna lie, man. It's like, he helped me in so many ways, but I helped him in so many ways because I got his story out there for the people that didn't know who he was and for the people that did know who he was, that he was able to tell his story. And I'm happy that I was able to do that because people slighted him and all he wanted was people to hear his story. All he wanted was people to hear what he went through. To give him his flowers. Yeah, he may have went about it the wrong way. 
you know, he might have, you know, he should have not went about it the way he did. But, you know, when when people is not, you know, opening them doors for you, sometimes you got to, you know, kick in them doors and you may have to offend a few people because people are not going to respect humbleness. People are not going to respect a person trying to comfort them and, and get a listen, you know. People kick, you know, closed doors in your face. And yeah, he may have went about a lot of things wrong, but who am I to judge? Who who is anybody to judge that man? You can you're not God to judge him. A lot of y'all is not God to judge him. At the end of the day, he was a man that stood on his principles. That was that was deserved. That was deserving of hearing his story out. There was people that did not know about his story. You know, and I feel like, damn, man, like, he went through a lot. He went through a lot, man. You know, and it's messed up, man. The way he, the way he went out was, it was wrong, man. And for the dudes that's throwing shots, man, I love the live the video that Hassan did, man. He, he spoke a lot of facts in there, bro. It's a lot of realism because it's about making it home in one piece to your family. You know? And sometimes we make choices and we we don't know when we're going to go. That man didn't know he was going to go the way he went out. You know? You know the homie... Speaking about, you know, his lawsuit when he came on my live and he was, you know, really talking about like, yo, um, I got this lawsuit and I'm really trying to see, you know, what's going to happen with that, you know. And, you know, we didn't really get into more details because we didn't get to do the interview and... That's the thing that really, really hurt me a little bit because I really wanted to talk with him about a lot of things, man. I really wanted to do, I really wanted to push his story, man. His story needed to be heard, man. Needed to be heard, man. It's like a movie. Like, if you really listen to his story and just what he went through, it's an inspiring story because this is a man that was incarcerated that went through hell and he triumphed them and things to, to, to come home, right? Let's look at it like this. You incarcerated, you come home, you get into the, the music industry, right? You get into the music, the music industry, you're around all these big moguls and execs. You get around, you, you, you not only do that with the music, but you also, get into politics and you write a book like these are things that you have to look and say to yourself damn man this dude had a life that's one of a kind man yeah people want to look at the the bad things and say oh he was a convicted felon and he he did this and he he was a slasher and all this but look at what the other things that this man did besides him being a convicted felon besides him doing the things that he did in prison look at what he did coming home look at what he did on earth look at the positive things we all we always want to reflect on the negative things but we never want to reflect on the positive things a lot of people want to give this man his flowers now because he passed away but where was these olive branches and these these flowers that was given to him when he was when he was living i'd rather have my flowers alive and i'd rather be alive to smell my flowers than be dead and I can't smell them. All that man asked for was his flowers. All he asked for was his recognition. All he asked for was his respect. That's all he wanted. He didn't want nothing else but his respect. That's all that man asked for. And yeah, the way he went about it, it could have been a little more different. But he only knew the way he went about it 
was the way he was going to get his results. You know, they always say desperate times calls for desperate measures. And like I said, he went about a lot of things the wrong way. But you can't afford him for that. He was only going about things the way he knew. And the way he thought that he would get results. You know, it's sad though, you know, sad though, you know, um, my prayers go out to his family. Like I said in my live stream, my prayers, my prayers go out to his family. And for a lot of you people that the naysayers that say, oh, he should have never done a blog. He should have never went on the interview with Bullets Gotti. He should have never did this. Man, I was the only one that, 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 that truly wanted that man's story to be out there none of you dudes opened your doors or gave extended your hands to give his story a lot of you dudes was throwing jabs at him china brim mikey b y'all dudes that's that's throwing shade at him was throwing all this hella shade at him for an incident that happened at the bar clays you know what i'm saying I respected what Son said in his, his video. Like, watching that video, it angered me. Because I wish I was there to help out the men, to help out China. It was six on one. All because he spoke the truth about some coward-ass industry dudes that used him for street credibility. They didn't even want to help that man out to get his story heard. You know, I feel like, you know, it was just messed up that everything that happened to him and, and when people was like, yeah, we we had something to do with him being like all y'all dudes incriminating yourself. Now y'all want to take down the videos and all that because he's dead. But y'all did all that to shame this man for what reason? For what reason? Because y'all was so coward enough that y'all was so much of a coward that y'all didn't have the heart to step to this man in the prisons. So you got the heart to tear this man down while he was on the street and he got caught lacking. That's the problem with us as a people. We always want to tear each other down but never uplift. We never want to uplift. That man ain't deserve that. And he didn't deserve what happened to him. So way dudes was like throwing shots, yo, F that and all that. And he was on here talking this and that. But you don't understand why he was saying the things he was saying. You don't understand why he felt the way he felt. He felt the way he felt because he felt that people weren't giving him his flowers and his respect. And he felt his way. And I can't fool him for feeling the way he felt. Because as a man, I would feel a way too if I feel like dudes are slighting me because they feel like they got money or they got influence or whatever they feel like. But these dudes ain't the truth. And this is what's wrong. These same dudes that slighted the homie, it's the same dudes that's corrupting the youth to do the wrong things in the community. Because they got a little influence and they get a little respect. It is what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, Peter, the brother Myron Dukes, man. Sha Dukes, man. We truly will be missed, bro. Um, I'm definitely, definitely going to keep you in my prayers and, <clears throat> and memories. Um, I'm going to keep his family in my prayers. Um, I didn't get to really speak the way I wanted to speak candidly earlier. But I said I want to do this, this pre-recording video to speak the way I want to speak because this dude was really a friend and a brother to me. You know what I'm saying? Like when I... When I bond with somebody, man, and it's, 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 it's good on energy, man, like, I, I rock with you to the end, bro. 
I ain't turn my back on him. And he ain't turn his back on me. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I still ride with the homie. Because he was a good dude that rode with me. And I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Because me and his brother had a great conversations. And he always spoke highly of me. And I'm going to speak highly of him. He was more than just what people want to make him to be. A monster. A big monster. A savage. A dude that put in work. No, he's more than that. He was an intellect. He was a father. He was a friend. He was a brother. He was a son. He made a difference in his community in Bridgeport. By doing the things he did. He didn't put a gun in a kid's hand. He ain't put drugs in a kid's hand. He ain't go out here and bang the set and corrupted his community. No, he went out there to make a difference, to speak to the youth. He went out there and wrote a book about the assassination of JFK. How can you not respect somebody doing something like that? That's different. That's gangster to me. Somebody that's speaking about different things, not glorifying the ignorance. And he called out a lot of these dudes that were frauds. And he stood on his principles and his morals. And you got to respect him on that. And he didn't cower. He didn't hide. He didn't need four or five or 15 dudes with him. He was one man and one man on his own. He stood on his own two feet. Got to respect that. You dudes can't even move like that. I respect somebody like that. He respect me the same way for carrying it the way I carry. He said, I like Bullets Gotti because he ain't a friend of none of these dudes. He don't like none of these dudes and he stand on his business. And I appreciate him for that. That's my brother. That's my man's. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. My prayers go out to his family. My prayers go out to everybody that loved him, his comrades. My prayers go out. A lot of people's feeling it right now. You know, I'm hurt because I spoke to this man five days ago. Now it's six days. It's five days ago. We were supposed to do this interview Saturday, last Saturday. And I knew something was wrong because he had hit me back. Rest in peace, bro.